Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. I'm sorry for my absence as of late, but I've been working on a project that I feel is really going to help people in terms of learning with my channel. So it's kind of an accompaniment to my channel, but more on that later. Without further ado, we're going to be learning today about a very sneaky yet very useful compositing trick in regards to rendering semi-transparent pixels in the EV engine. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Quite simply, if we look here, these pixels, whoops, these pixels here, they're semi-transparent and that's being caused by the bloom checkbox. This looks great as it is. Now, if I render it with the black background, we should see that we are getting that really nice bloom on our text. However, if I just go back and delete this background, to reveal the transparent background, you'll see that that bloom still exists within the viewport. But as soon as I press F12 and go to our rendering, you'll see that it no longer exists. This is really annoying because we take so much time and spend so much time setting up this scene only for it to be unable to render semi-transparent pixels. So then you have to go into Photoshop or Critter or GIMP and then apply it manually. And sometimes it just doesn't look as good. So today I'm going to show you exactly what to do in order to render those semi-transparent pixels in the EV engine on a transparent background. And it's actually rather simple. So let's get started. First step, we're just going to go to our compositing tab right up here. And as you'll see, I've already got this set up that actually shows my alpha channel. So you'll see that there's no hidden alpha pixels anywhere. It's just pure alpha. So color and alpha, there it is. And the reason I'm able to see this in this viewport is because I've got backdrop on and I'm running it through a viewer node as well. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is we're gonna get a glare node. Now I'm just gonna put this in here and you'll notice that nothing really happens and that's okay. We're going to change the glare from a streaks to fog glow and change the threshold to about 0.1 for this instance. I know it works well. And I'm going to change the quality to high. Next, I'm going to grab two mix nodes and I'm going to change them to add. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to take the image output and put it into the first input of both, no, not sorry, not both, of just the first one and then take the alpha and put it into the first input of the second one. Then I'm gonna take the glare output and I'm gonna put it into the second input of both of these add nodes. Wonderful. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a curve and I'm going to run this add through the image input and then just creak up that curve just so. So it's got that really nice convex shape. Now, what I could do is just run this image into the alpha, but a easier method is probably just to set the alpha directly. So as you can see, once we've put that back in, you'll notice that it's actually gotten rid of our alpha and it's brought back that nice glow, um, which is annoying. But once we put this in here and then this add in here, you should notice that we've brought our trans semi-transparent pixels back. So if I go check the alpha, you'll see Look at that, that is really useful. Now, if you would like to have a bit more fine control over the size of your glow, what we can do is we can just duplicate this curve and then plug it into the glare here. Now this will just give us a nice bit of control. 
yeah, so that's how we do it. Really simple. And well, if you would actually like to know what this um, project that I'm working on, the Legion of Fire, it's actually on my website here. So it's a comic that I am in the middle of do, uh, creating the first volume. And it's actually coming, well, relatively soon. I've still got a bit more work to do on it, but it's coming along. But the big thing that I wanted to actually get done, and which is why I haven't been posting as regularly as I should, and why the format of this video is a bit more haphazard and casual, I haven't actually prepared for it as much, is because I've been working on my website. You may notice if you've already visited, that this is a far cry change from what was previously here. So I've had to go in and rip out all the back end and I've just been rebuilding it from scratch. And the thing that I think is going to really help all of you on this channel of Falzon Tutorials is the tutorial section. I've completely revamped it. It looks and functions great. It's almost a bit like a new site now. So I'm still in the process of uh, putting in all my old tutorials on here and what you'll see is that it shows us all our latest tutorials and then down here it actually breaks the tutorials up into categories and we can you know see some more so if I go into the blender tutorials it should take me to a page where all the blender tutorials are in a pagination so I can go page one page two and then you, it's got its description and yeah, if we click on one, we can see that there's a bit of actual extra information included in a lot of these articles, which is why I think they're actually good for watching my videos in accompaniment. Then you've got the video here, we can play it. Pretty great. And we've also got other things like taking us to related content as well as uh, I'm also in the process of building up a store that's gonna be including really useful things for people into 3D and Blender and art in general. So I'm working on a few things like a photogrammetry pack and a new tutorial that is gonna go really in depth and is focused on Blender. And that's going to be released when Blender 2.8 is released. So it's going to kind of coincide with that. And hopefully it's going to really help people get a leg up on this new uh, version of Blender. Because right now, a lot of my tutorials are very specific and they're quite tailored to one aspect like this one. This one's about not compositing in general, but a function of compositing. Whereas the tutorial that I have planned that I'm gonna be selling on my gum road is gonna be more about getting people up to speed and really teach people the ropes, not the how to do a specific thing, but how to do a more general thing so they're able to take that knowledge and apply it to their own project, which I feel is a more sought after skill. Like I can teach you how to do anything, but at the end of the day, you wanna learn how to do it for yourself. And really that's what we're all here for. So yeah, I hope that this uh, new format of the, ah, there's my puppy. I hope that this new format of the website really helps and I hope that you use it. You can even sign up for a newsletter, which is great. And so if I post something on here in regards to tutorials, so if you sign up through a tutorials page, you'll be only getting really a general newsletter and a tutorials newsletter and you'll be notified on probably the month's end on any new tutorials or anything coming out in regards to the software that I'm teaching. But yeah, I hope that you have really learned something in this tutorial about getting our semi-transparent pixels rendering on a transparent background in the EV engine. If you have, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to be notified upon a video's release. You can also find the node setup for this tutorial on my website at falzonfantasy.com slash learn slash tutorials.